Hello, girlies. Today we're gonna talk about something a little, uh, sure, I mean, I'll call it a little less serious, some more, more social commentary, I suppose. Um, we're gonna talk about men. <laughs> Specifically, down low men, toxic masculinity, um, the desire to be a man, whatever that means, and patriarchy. It's gonna be a very light-hearted conversation. So first I wanna start off sort of light-hearted-ish, you know. Um, so many of these men are down low. They are in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> so many of these men are in the closet. Um, and that is due to a lot of things. That is due to um, religious persecution, that's due to the altering of a lot of these spiritual passages that we think are so sacred and we think are so important and have never been touched or changed before, but newsflash, they have been because we're people and we use systems to uh, hold power over other people. That's what we want. We want power. We want control, right? Uh, and that's a big part of patriarchy, right? Um, let's talk about these download men first. Y'all better watch out, because that's the thing. Some of these men are low down and some of them are down low, but it may be the same thing. There's such an ego when it comes to masculinity and especially heterosexual masculinity because all of these heterosexual men are so shallow and fragile when it comes to their masculinity. When I say all, I mean most, not all of them, of course, but most of these, most of these heterosexual men, their sexuality is so fragile because they don't even actually know what it is. And when I actually look at it, I realize a lot of these heterosexual men are actually not heterosexual. They're gynosexual which is the divine attraction towards femininity, not necessarily females. So you got this dude in college or in high school, you're in dorms or whatever, and he sees this really good looking guy across the cafeteria. The guy has long hair, long braids, beautiful brown caramel skin, hoop earrings, lipstick, face beat, uh, carrying a purse. They're a little more femme Hmm. They're a little more femme presenting. And the guy is into that. And immediately he labels himself as gay. Gay is a term that has been used to harm, to hurt, and to belittle. But it's not that anymore. I grew up in neighborhoods where Gay was used as a bad thing. So the teacher says, we have homework tonight. Man, that's gay. I grew up in neighborhoods where no homo was established. Man, you got a nice outfit on, no homo. I am not a homosexual. I'm not queer, I'm not gay, I'm not weak. I am a man. Now we can go into the intricacies and I'll go down a little bit of them. You look at the global, historic, belittling and denigration of black men and black males bodies through chattel slavery, even before then where black people owned their own people. After chattel slavery calling men boys, you think about what it means to be strong, in the black community, and you don't see femme. Which is why so many black men belittle black women. Which is also why so many black women harness and uplift their divine masculinity. Because they're upholding the men and themselves, and it's unfair, unjust. 
there should be a balance in your body of fem and masculine energy. But straight men are so fragile because they don't have anything to prove. I'd kiss a girl. All right, for free. For free. <laughs> for free. Because I have a point to prove. That don't change nothing about me. Nothing. Not a single thing. So many people, and this is where we get into the download conversation, <clears throat> run away from who they are in search of who they should be or who the world wants them to be. They abandon themselves, right? And leave behind everything they are in search for what's going to get them the furthest in life. And that leads them into the grave ending of a life. Patriarchy also harms men a lot. And we've looked at, and when we look at the history of the world, patriarchy was not always the way to go. A lot of that came from very Eurocentric ideologies about the way our society should be built. But you look at a lot of colored people, people of color, and their tribes, their systems, their family forms, you don't see that. You see more egalitarian societies, maternal-led societies, matriarchs, which is why the rise of all of this toxic masculinity, the rise of the need to belittle women, the rise of the need to put women in their place, the rise of the need to uplift toxic masculine ideology, toxic patriarchal ideology, is all coming from male insecurity. Because what do we actually got? Let's be for real. What do we actually have? Truly. T truly. You can impregnate someone, but they're going to abort that sucker right out the... Now in some states. <laughs> now in some states. In some states. All right? God, our society. Right? So then we build systems. A, a, a lot of research I've done shows that patriarchy comes from the plow. Agricultural. And agricultural uh, awareness and growth in our society. Some of these men, if you're queer or gay or, and if you're male or non binary, some of these men want to love you in private one way and love you in public another. They want to say certain things in the dark and not let it come to light. And we settle for it. Especially these down low white men. Man, a down low white man will eat. Now, down low black man. <laughs> down low. Down. Down low black men will eat you. Like, they would, like, man, they'll get you. They'll get you. But there's something so evil about a down low white man that you can't compare it to anything else. Because he's male, he has patriarchy, toxic masculinity, and an entire society built around him, behind him. He's white, white supremacy, backing him, helping him. Oh but he ain't straight. Mm. So he gonna do everything in his power to keep that appearance because he knows the power, status, control that comes with that. Right? And he will love you one way in private and love you another way in public. Toxic masculinity is so deeply rooted in our society that this one conversation ain't gonna do it. Because so many men Forget sexuality for a moment. Don't even know how to love themselves. 
When you lack that foundation of self-love, you run to everything else to try and get it. You run to everything else to try and love you. There is nothing gayer than looking for the love of another man, than looking for another man to validate your manhood. You look trifling. <laughs> nothing gayer. So I'm gonna run to Andrew Tate wannabes. I'm gonna run to Joe Rogan wannabes. I'm gonna run to all these men who are so insecure about their status in the world and about who it is that they think they are, right? This isn't new. Patriarchal ideology, toxic masculinity, none of that is new. Beginning of time, pretty much. But it's disgusting that we live in a world <laughs> where everything is impacted by it. A male wears a certain thing, he's now gay. A male doesn't wear that certain thing, he's straight. A male talks a specific, a specific way, he's now gay. He doesn't, he's straight, right? And how patriarchy affects women. The belittling, denigrating, the ignoring of humanity, of a life. Because you want to own somebody. These toxic men want to own somebody. They want somebody to control because when they were younger, they never had that control. They never had the opportunity to deal with their internal demons. So now they're making you their slave. They never had the, the chance. They never took the opportunity, right? Somebody didn't get love from their mama, and now they're mad at you, so they're going to make you their slave. They're going to belittle you and denigrate your livelihood. Everything it is that you are, the beauty and grace within you. Because they really hate themselves, and they don't know how to fix it. These men and their ego, their masculinity, it's disgusting and despicable. That's why I'm talking to the queer men, right? When you're dealing with a down low man, you are choosing to deal and fool around with somebody who just learned how to walk, crawl, roll over to their stomach, <laughs> and you out here flying. You queer men that are willing to deal with down low men who are not ready and probably never will be ready to state who it is that they are out open and publicly, you queer men are doing yourself a disservice because you are looking and accepting scraps and crumbs of love. Because that's the level of love you think you deserve. He gonna love you one way in public and love you another way in private. It's just what it's gonna be. But what you gotta do is be like, nah, I ain't with all that. I ain't with all that. I love myself too much to let that happen. I choose me. Especially when you're dark skinned or you're brown skinned and you're femme presenting and you're male and you're low income and you're not Christian, and you're not conventionally attractive, and you have a disability. And you're non-gender conforming, he slash they. The list can go on. Keep naming more, or keep those. When you're a part of any of that, or all of that combined, oh yeah. In the queer community, oh yeah. Trying to attract love. Because when you've been part of a society, when you, have, <laughs> when you have been a part of a society, your entire life has told you that you're a sinner and that you're wrong and that you're bad and that you're evil. Because some scraps of an old book said so, nah. You're going to hate yourself. And you're going to look for love from white men. Of course you will. When all of these spiritual texts that were written at a specific time to apply to those people are used 
to be applicable to the times we're living today, it's going to fail and fall through because those spiritual texts and scripts have been rewritten, altered, and changed for the purpose of power. Power. We need to make more babies, so let's make being gay wrong. Black plague. People are dying, men are having sex with men, women are having sex with women, they're not making babies, black plague is going on, let's just change this text real quick. Forget about pedophilia, let's, let's, let's completely forget about pedophilia. Let's talk about homosexuality. Someone loving someone else, right? Because your book, a book that has been rewritten, altered, and changed many, many times, right? Because your book says so, with all of these chapters that have been removed and nobody don't know where they at, with all of these secrets and all of this research backing the fact that your book has been rewritten, altered, changed for the purpose of gaining and attaining power, now nah, we ain't gonna listen to that. Homo sapiens meaning wise man, we ain't wise. We're not, that's not us. That's, that, that's, that's not who we are. If we were wise, we, <laughs> that's messed up. That's messed up. These Republicans, if we were so wise, these Republicans and conservatives would not care so much about abortion. They think you're killing babies. Your baby's going to go to school and get shot and killed either way. They're going to die either way, right? That's your logic. Your logic is you're killing the baby, right, inside of the woman who has to have the baby. Well, go ahead. Raise that baby. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, no, nope, they didn't make it to nine. Johnny was nine years old when they were shot and killed inside of a school along with 30 of their other friends because you decided not to act. Right. Where does it say that in your book, in your holy book? Right. And that, these lawmakers, these legislators, most of them are men, power, control, the need to be the centerfold. A few takeaways. Don't let these men drown you. Don't let these down low men fool you or make you think you're crazy, because you ain't. Don't let these men manipulate you, because you are beautiful. You are smart. You are talented. You are more than enough. And for the black and brown people, <laughs> Don't let these white men make you think you need to be white to accept love. Make you think your body has to have less curves to accept love. You are everything and more that you were supposed to be. All of these men that are toxically masculine, insecure. If you are a man and you are watching Andrew Tate, if you are a man and you are watching Joe Rogan and you are watching The List Goes On and all of these men are telling you what being a man is, from a heteronormative perspective, you got something going on that you need to figure out. Don't care who you are. Because that, those ideas are directly affecting you and your heart, your soul, and everybody else around you. Fix it. Work on it. We ain't got time to work on it for you. Because us black people, us brown people, us femme people, us queer people, the list goes on. We tired. That's on you.